Section 14.4, the last section of the course, flaws of the apportionment method. There's going to be three flaws, and they're all focused on Hamilton's method, which, remember, is the one that uses the standard divisor. The three flaws that uh, occur are the Alabama paradox, the population paradox, and the new states paradox. These only apply to Hamilton's method. So these flaws only apply to Hamilton's method, and they do not apply to Jefferson's method, Webster's method, or Adams' method. In, 18, in 1980, the Belinsky and Young's impossibility theorem stated that there is no perfect apportionment method that satisfies these, the quota rule and avoids any paradoxes. First is the Alabama paradox. The Alabama paradox occurs when an increase in the total number of items to be apportioned results in a loss of an item for a group. You may be wondering um, how the Alabama paradox came about. This flaw first occurred in the apportionment of the House of Representatives in 1880 when a discussion occurred on whether we should have 299 or 300 members in the House. Using Hamilton's method with 299 members, Alabama would have received eight seats. But if the total number of representatives were increased to 300, Alabama would have only received seven seats. So if you ever see um, a group losing part of their apportionment because there is an increase in size, that's called the Alabama paradox. So let's look at an example of what an Alabama paradox could look like. <clears throat> so consider Stanhope, a small country with a population of 15,000 people and three states, A, B, C. There are 150 seats in the legislature that must be apportioned among the three states according to their population. Show that the Alabama paradox occurs if the number of seats is increased to 151. So on this table, I'm showing you the population of each state. State A has 740, B has 6,730, C has 7,530. If you added those together, that would be your total population of 15,000. So round standard divisors and standard quotas to the nearest hundredth. So remember to calculate your standard divisor, you have to take your 15,000 and you have to divide it by how many seats you have, which is 150, and your standard divisor should be 100. So then to get your status standard quota for each state, you need to take the population of each state divided by the standard divisor. So if you take 740 divided by 100, you'll have 7.4. 6730 divided by 100 is 67.3. 7530 divided by 100 is 75.3. Now remember, for Hamilton, you always round down. So we're gonna turn that 740 into a seven, the 67.3 into a 67, and the 75.3 into a 75. Well, that's only 149. So we have one extra that we need to disperse, and you always go with the one that had the larger decimal, which would give state A eight representatives, B 67 representatives, and C is 75 representatives. So keep that in mind. We have 8, 67, and 75. If you add them all together, you're up to 150. <clears throat> now, they've just, they're trying to decide if they should go up one more seat. So if we have 151 seats, that's going to change our standard divisor. So our population is still 15,000, but now we have to divide by 151, which makes our standard divisor 99.34. So then we'll have to find the standard quota for each state. So take each population divided by 99.34, and your standard quota for 80 is gonna, or for A is 7.45, for B is 67.75, and for C is 75.8. Now remember, we round down. So we're gonna go down to seven, down to 67, and down to 75. Well, that leaves us with 149 seats. We're supposed to have 151. So find the two items that have the highest decimal place, which is state C, and state B and bump them up one additional seat. And now state A has seven seats, they used to have eight. State B has 68 and state C has 76. So when the number of seats increased from 150 to 151, state A's apportionment actually decreased from eight to seven. So this example illustrates the Alabama paradox. <clears throat> Next is the population paradox. The population paradox occurs when group A loses items to group B 
even though groups A population grew at a faster rate than groups B. So this was first discovered in the early 1900s using Hamilton's method. Um, it, at the time, Virginia lost a seat in the House of Representatives while Maine gained a seat, even though Virginia's population was growing at a much faster rate than Maine's population. So this is why it's called the population paradox. So let's look at this example. Consider Alexandria, a small country with a population of 100,000 and three states, A, B, and C. There are 100 seats in the legislature that must be apportioned among the three states. Using Hamilton's method, the apportionment method is shown in the table. So, population A has 23,527 people. B has 5,548 people. C has 70,928 people. So first thing we have to do is find our standard divisor, which is our total population divided by the total um, things we're apportioning, which is 100. So if you do your reduction here, um, your standard deviation, or your, sorry, standard divisor is gonna be 1,000. So take each population and divide it by 1,000, which is gonna give you 23.53. 5.55 and 70.93. Then we round each of those numbers down to 23, 5, and 70. But if you add those together, that only adds to be 98. So you have two leftovers that you need to apportion. So 0.93 is the highest decimal, so we'll give state C an extra apportionment. 0.55 is the next highest decimal, so we'll give state B an extra proportionment. So state A has 23, B has six and C has 71. So keep that in mind and let's see what happens um, when the population changes. So suppose that the population increases according to the table below and that the 100 seats are reapportioned. Show that the population paradox occurs. So population A is now 23,926, B is now 5,648, and C is now 71,110. So your population went up by 684 people. So that's gonna change your standard divisor, which is going to change everything. So if we go through and we calculate our percent increases, state A has an increase of 399 people. So they increased by roughly 1.7%. State B had an increase of 100 people. So they increased by 1.8%. Notice they were much smaller than state A. State C has an increase of 180 people, so they increased by about 0.2%. But they were the largest state, keep that in mind. So all three states had an increase. State B is increasing at a faster rate than A and C. The standard divisor using the new population is 1,006.84. Our new population divided by our number of seats. So now when we go to our table and we divide by our new standard divisor, A is at 23.76, B is at 5.61, and C is at 70.63. So remember on Hamilton, you always go down to 23, down to 5, down to 70. But if you add those together, you're at 98. You need to be at 100, so you have two extras. So 0.76 is the highest, and 0.63 is the next highest. So we'll give A an extra seat, and we'll give C an extra seat. So A has 24, B has 5, and C has 71. Now, that's not good for B. B previously had 6. State B lost a seat to state A, even though B's population is growing at a faster rate than A's. So as a result, we have a population paradox. The last paradox is the new states paradox. This occurs when the addition of a new group and additional items to be proportioned reduces the previous apportionment of another group. Um, so this happened, oh, in 1907, when Oklahoma was added as a state. Um, when, it, when a new state is added, new seats must be added to the legislature. So you have to determine the number of new seats to add. So um, when we did this and we reapportioned the House of Representatives, we made five additional seats for Oklahoma, which Oklahoma was entitled to. When we did the reapportionment, Maine increased from three to four seats, and New York decreased from 38 to 37 seats. 
So essentially, New York had to give Maine one of its seats in the House. Okay, so let's check out a new state's paradox. The Oklahoma Public Library System has received a grant to purchase 100 laptop computers to be distributed between libraries A and B. The 100 laptops will be apportioned based on the population served by each library. The apportionment using Hamilton's method is shown in the table. So we take, we have to find our standard divisor, which was the 10,000 divided by 100, which equals 100. So they told us our population was 10,000. The population of library A is 2,145. The population of library B is 7,855. Take each of those numbers divided by your standard divisor. So 2,145 divided by 1,000 is 2,145. And remember, Hamilton says to round down to 21. 7,855 divided by 100 is 78.55. And remember, Hamilton says to round down to 78. Well, if you add 21 and 78 together, you get 99, but you have 100 computers. So someone gets an extra one. So the higher decimal on the 78 is the 0.55, so library B is going to get the extra computer. So library A gets 21 computers, library B gets 79 computers, add them together, that makes your 100 computers. So suppose that an anonymous donor decides to donate money to purchase six more laptops, provided that a third library, library C, serves a population of 625. So this is included in the new apportionment. So show that the new state's paradox occurs when the laptops are reapportioned. So now your population is 10,625 people. The total number of laptops is now 106. So your new standard divisor is 100.24. So if you go through and you take each population and you divide it by your standard divisor, you're going to get 21.4, which we round down to 21, 76.36, round down to 78, 6.24, round down to 6. Now if you add them all together, they only make 105. So one library is going to get the extra computer. The one with the highest decimal is library A. So library A, A is going to get 22 computers. Library B is going to have 78 computers. And library C is going to have 6. Now previously, library A was at 21 and library B was at 79. So before library C was added, library B had 79 laptops. When we added a new library and increased the total number of laptops to be apportioned, library B lost a laptop to library A. So we have a case of a new state's paradox. Belinsky and Young found out there is no perfect apportionment method that satisfies the quota rule and avoids any paradoxes. So you're always going to have something that you have to check for. So make sure you analyze each situation carefully. This last slide is just an overview of the four methods that we've learned for apportionment and what violations they can make. Um, as far as the quota rule, Hamilton is the only one that does not violate the quota rule. Um, Je Jefferson, Adams, and Webster can all potentially violate the quota rule. Remember, that means your lower bound and upper, long, round, um, upper quotas may not be used as your apportionment. Um, Hamilton can violate all of the paradoxes, the Alabama paradox, the population paradox, and the new state paradox. Um, none of the other methods violate any of the paradoxes. And then just on a general note, in general, Hamilton and Jefferson tend to favor the larger states, whereas Adams and Webster tend to favor the smaller states. All right, good luck.